Good afternoon, good evening, guys. Josh here from Sportitude Running. Now, in front of me here, I have got the ASICS Kayano 30. Little bit dirty, little crease marks in it. I have used these for 100 kilometers running, and what I wanted to do today was give you my perspective of how this shoe has performed with reference to its running. I've also done a little bit of walking in them, wore them at work here, I've done the school drop-off with the kids. So I'm trying to get a bit of an understanding of how this shoe will actually work for the lot of the Kayano wearers out there. Yes, it's a running shoe, and yes, ASICs have put a lot of effort, all their effort, into in executing the best, most comfortable, supportive shoe for running, but we all know that ASICs can wear us to a little bit of everything in them. So I'll give you a bit of a breakdown of how I have thought this shoe has performed uh, across all of those categories, tell you how I think it's going to perform after 500 Ks, tell you all the things I like, and some things I don't. So with today's review, let's get stuck in. Okay, guys, let's talk about my pair of Kayano 30s here. Now, I just want to discuss one point is that uh, ASICs did give me these almost three months ago. So I haven't done all of my running in them, but I have got up to 100 kilometers of mileage running in this specific pair. Now, this color we don't think is going to be ranged here in Australia. I could be wrong, but it's not one of the colors that we at Sportitude Running were offered, but they were kind enough to give me this pair to put some kilometers in. So thank you very much, ASICs Australia. So first things first, I mean, your ASICs, Kayano wearer, I mean, it's been a pretty consistent person over the last 30 years. Someone who enjoys the running, is looking for good cushioning under the body, good stable ride, and obviously that arch support which kicks in for that mild overpronator. We sell a vast majority of Kayanos for a lot of walkers out there, for people who are using them for the weekend, shopping, going to the gym, walking the dog, also doing a bit of running. They're a very versatile shoe with regards to what they actually can provide for the active person out there. So what I did was I did a little bit of everything in these. While I have clocked 100 kilometers of running, I've also worn these at work and I've um, um, done a little bit of my school pickups and bits and pieces out on the road. So um, today is going to give you uh, a look and give you a little bit of a summary of what I think this shoe has done for me as a runner, but also what I think this shoe is going to do for a lot of active people out there as well. So uh, let's get talking all things Kayano 30. Okay, first things first, I just want to highlight the fact that I'm still the same size in a 30 as I was the 29, so I'm a 9 US in a D width. Still very breathable, still nice and stable with regards to the offering across the top of your arch. And the great thing about this shoe is the heel counter, I feel, is very, very sound. Great bit of memory foam at the back too. So, um, look, if you want a little bit more information on the Kayano 30, I do have a link in the video below, which I have my full Kayano 29 to Kayano 30 review. So that'll give you the big breakdown. But of course, we're talking all things after 100 kilometers. So the shoe itself, there's no unusual wear in the upper, and I'd expect that after 100 kilometers, but it's great. It's breathing well. It's nice and supported. I really like what this upper is doing for my foot. The biggest improvement, I think, other than the midsole, is the outsole. Now, bigger surface area. So for a lot of you at home, you're probably thinking, oh, that's going to feel a little bit more clunky. It's not going to feel like that refined Kayona 29, 28 sort of feel. I can tell you right now, catastrophically at home, this is a better outsole, and it does complement the midsole. Now, we've had everything from dry weather to wet weather, really cold climate, so I've ran on bitumen pavement, I've taken this across some really slippery surfaces, and I have had no issues whatsoever with the amount of grip that this shoe has provided me on bitumen, on pavement, I've also taken it on the grass as well, and had a couple laps around my local oval, and in regards to the overall outsole, it has performed very, very well. But the outsole, and why it is so successful is more due to the fact of what ASICs have done with the midsole. This midsole technology, this four-dimensional or fourth-dimensional guidance system through here, again, there's a lot of people are going to be questioning what ASICs have done here. I can tell you right now, this is a fantastic way to execute the arch support. Now, I'm a midfoot striker. However, a couple of times in my warm-ups, I was deliberately heel striking to get a bit of an idea of how this shoe would feel for the vast majority of people who are going to be buying it. And it does feel cushioned, but that support is in the right area. It doesn't feel intrusive, and I really like what ASICs have done with the execution. It's smooth, it's simple, and it is very efficient throughout the whole gait cycle. So with reference to that 4, 4D guidance system, a huge tick from my end. I think ASICs have executed it very, very well, and I know that a lot of runners out there are going to find the same outcome with regards to this support system. Talking about the cushioning, obviously they only have the gel pod in the heel. 
It's cushioned, it feels nice, it's in the right areas. I've got no complaints whatsoever. And the other great thing about this is that concave setup, which we see on that lateral side. So you can see there is a slight cutaway on that lateral side of the heel unit through there. Again, for me, I don't notice it when I'm up and up and running because I'm a midfoot striker. But again, as I said, warming up, cooling down, heel striking in this shoe, it feels very plush underneath the foot. So you're gonna get a lot of ample cushioning in that first entry point for your heel strikers, which is fantastic. Now, just to dial back in regards so the other things I did in this shoe, as I said in the intro, walking in this shoe, it feels very stable. It's got a wide platform and it feels fantastic and very comfortable. If anything, it feels a little bit lighter and you can relax into it a little bit more. With your foot sitting on top of that platform for walkers, having more shoe underneath your foot just gives you a little bit more confidence, more foundation, and you can relax into the midsole a little bit nicer. And I think it's a really, really good execution of a midsole, not only for running, clearly, because it is a running shoe, but for those walkers out there, they're gonna use this shoe, you really enjoy the overall transition as well. Okay, a couple of things that I think um, ASICs may have missed the mark. Now, it's not always rainbows and butterflies or beers and skittles, whatever you'd like to say, because there are subtle things that I think brands can always continue to improve, and a lot of it is potentially subjective, or it is in reference to my situation with this shoe, it could just be me, but let's talk about it. For me, I got a little bit of a hot spot at the back of my heel through here. So I do play around with lacing systems. I, I execute the heel lock when I think it's appropriate and sometimes I don't use it. It depends on the thickness of the sock. It depends on how long I'm gonna spend out on the road. But for me, at the back of my heel, I got a bit of a hot spot and sometimes it can just be a once off occurrence and it could be my sock selection as well. However, it did, a kick in for the first three runs inside this shoe. Now, I wear feature socks. They're my favorite socks. They're my go-to sock. Um, they are dual layered, so they do take a lot of that heat out with fabric on fabric rubbing, not fabric on skin. So I, for me, don't think it was the sock selection because I've used that sock or used that series of sock for a number of years now and had no other issues in any other shoes. Little hotspot kicked in at the back of my heel through here. Look, do I think it was a huge issue? It was enough for me to be aware, but um, after those three runs, uh, I didn't have any concerns whatsoever and it could have just been again like all shoes there is a small wearing period but um, I must say that those first few runs I wasn't you know over the moon with regards to the overall performance of this shoe I loved how the midsole felt I loved about the forefoot the upper feel but it's just that little hot spot I got at the back of my heel in saying that though the the, the um, following eight to nine runs I had done on this shoe again were really comfortable and I did not experience that hot spot at the back so um, just something to make note of um, and again that's the case with pretty much every single shoe you wear there's always things that you like and there's things that you don't like but let's hope that the things you do like heavily outweigh the things that you you don't and the things you don't like are easily fixable in this case it was so we are only a hundred kilometers into the life of the Kayano 30s for me um how do i think this shoe is going to wear well I think it's going to be a pretty consistent performer. Now, I'm going to try and ascertain how I think this shoe is going to perform right up to 500 kilometers. Now, you can see even looking at this shoe through here to the side, there's not a lot of compression that's been pushed through this shoe, and that's pretty good. I mean, I am only 73 kilograms, just make note of that. I'm not I'm not um, going to be putting too much force through this midsole, so obviously that is totally relevant to the person using this shoe, but I'm not getting a lot of unusual wear through the old performance in the midsole, so there's no increased compression lines. Some of the softer shoes out there for me, I do see a lot more wear. Hocker Clifton, for example, I really like that shoe, but I'd see a lot more compression on the lateral side of that midsole after 100 kilometers. And just knowing that I'll get about 450 to 500 kilometers out of my Cliftons. I'm talking the Kayana here. I reckon I'm going to give 600 to potentially 750 a nudge inside this shoe. More to the point, I think the midsole is a little bit more resilient. Um, and also the actual overall performance in regard to the stack and heel to toe drop um, is going to provide a little bit more of a durable wear within this midsole because I guarantee you when we first saw this shoe almost 14 months ago as a prototype, that was the biggest question we had. Oh, they look like they've refined it too much and it's too soft and it's not going to wear as well. I can sit here and tell you right now that I think after 500 kilometers, this is still going to have plenty to get up and going. I think there's going to be a little bit more life inside this shoe. And as I said, I'm going to push 650 to 700 kilometers in this shoe quite comfortably. I might even get a little bit more out of it, which I think is exciting and I think that's a really important point. 
it is a high mileage shoe. It's a shoe that's supposed to have a lot of cushion, uh, a lot of cushioning over a longer period of time. So you do want north of 500, north of 600 kilometers when you're investing this much money in your mileage shoe. Now, if I was doing everything in it, it might wear out a bit quicker, but because I'm only gonna be using this for my easy days on the weekends, I think 650 to 700 kilometers is a pretty good guess in regards to how I'm gonna get this shoe to go. Okay, guys, that's my take on the Kayano 30. I really do think ASICs have ticked all the boxes. I mean, this is a shoe they wanted to get right to release it to market because it is such a vast change from where it has come from. But uh, after 100 kilometers, I am very satisfied. I think we're gonna get uh, some really good outcomes with putting people into this shoe, potentially for the first time or for those people transitioning from Kayano 29 to Kayano 30. Now, no surprises, not every single runner out there is going to transition as easy as I have or as easy as some others, but um, please note that I think ASICs are, are pushing in the right direction. They're certainly making the right steps with regards to how they're executing arch support, not being overly aggressive, less intrusive, but producing a fantastic outcome based on comfort and obviously performance. So guys, if you've got any questions on um, uh, the shoe after 100 kilometers, let us know in the comment section below. If you've got any other questions, queries or theories about this shoe, let us know again in the comment section below. Um, but uh, I'm gonna be shooting another video on the Kayano 30, which is breaking down the midsole. Um, we've set it off uh, to a cabinet maker who saw it in half for us and returned it. And we're gonna have a lot of fun breaking down what they have actually done with the overall performance of this new 4D guidance system and what the cushioning looks like in the heel. So head to our YouTube channel um, and subscribe and search for that video. You'll find it. And any questions or comments about that, let us know. Until next time, guys, stay safe, be kind to one another, happy running, and we'll see you at the road. Take care.